Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Data Pulse Sustron Donner Model 100A. So it's a pulse generator. We got positive and negative output pulses. And this one is modified quite a lot. It's not really badly done or anything like that, see? They used some aluminium sticker here and tried to make it as nice as they could, right? I should probably show the uh, picture of the original non-modified because I found an uh, an eBay ad selling an untested unit for only $50. And there was a nice picture of the unmodified uh, unit. We got some repeat settings, uh, pulse delay, pulse width, and of course the amplitude uh, knobs like that. We can have a um, little bit of uh, trigger outputs and uh, enabling gate input and another trigger input. And then when you're using external trick, of course you have a uh, trigger level adjustment. So yeah, I think yeah, maximum here is only 10 megahertz so it's not a super fast one i also made a video um maybe a few years ago with another data pulse uh, unit it was the model 110 b so a much much larger unit and it can could also go a lot higher in uh, frequency i don't know exactly what happened to this um, unit i mean it is looking like it, it has been modified quite a lot I mean, what is going on here? Look at that. Yeah, that is bad, huh? If uh, we, I should probably put in a picture here of a non-modified unit. And then you can see the difference. I think this, I mean, where's the transformer? Where's the hole for the transformer? Something is going on here. So I definitely need to uh, open and investigate and here is the model 100 a let's look a little bit at the fantastic things we can find inside this unit the first thing i see is a missing transistor and that will be the positive output and i bet that will be the two parallel transistors it's a really interesting coupling they are using paralleled output transistors so we got a the positive output and we got the negative output right there and then you see a pair of trans transistors let me swap this around and let's look here see the layout reveals They are completely parallel. And somebody wrote collector base emitter, some little dots and stuff. So I bet they have been doing a little bit of debugging around here. Circuit board is uh, pretty beautiful. And, and uh, as of course you can see here, it's a, well, you saw it on the other side, right? It's a double sided board where the top side is a um, ground plane covering more or less the entire area. This uh, board is uh, really, really old. So it's before the plated through VS. So you see those uh, plug in metal parts like that. So this is a via, you stick it in and then you solder it. So it's a very reliable and you've got a few of them here and there. So that is how it's uh, done. 
There's a little uh, funny upgrade board here on the side. Well, this is, uh, of course, the two new uh, features we got here, the CMOS outputs. So this is for whatever reason. We got CMOS outputs, the two wires here. This is the ground wire, I think. So yes, it's soldered down to some metal down there. So that will be the ground. And then see, it's just twisted like this. So the two outputs, the positive and the negative outputs, twisted like that with one common ground and with the input wire to the driver board here. That will be the positive and negative wire for the power supply. They go all the way over here to a positive 12 volt. Pre-regulated, this is a regulated 12 volt, right? And here is the ground for the power supplies. And this ground here, here is uh, just connected to the entire ground plane. And if we look at this little plug-in board, they try to isolate it away from the chassis. And here again, you can see they made a big number out of isolating it from the chassis. And the fun thing is the rest of the unit is of course using a common ground plane that covers the entire top side and is mounted directly to chassis. And they think it is better to have a thin shitty wire, good for nothing, going all the way to a point down here where you have um, the, their ground for this supply. Hmm. This is something I find really weird. Obviously this board can run on AC, so we have two diodes and then a capacitor and Cena diode resistor, so there's a little local filtered Cena. And then there's a little capacitor and resistor, some timing that generates uh, positive negative signals out of one um, trigger signal. Really funny. As you see, the, this unit is normally designed to have rise times uh, of in the 5 nanosecond range, so it's really designed to be fast. So, so this is why you see output, outputs go in coax. It is, of course, 50 ohms. And then we have these attenuators used with two potentiometers and those resistors. And then again, coax output that goes all the way to the BNC connector. So that is how it should be done. Here on the back panel, we have the power supply transistors. I don't know if you can see this, but somebody's been poking around with this and trying to repair it, but they forgot the safety distance. So there, those wires are more or less touching the rear wall here. So I will have to bend and fix some proper safe distances on both of those uh, transistors. I don't know how easy it is to get in here and show you this one, but they are like almost touching. So this is not so good, but I don't see any leak capacitors. So I think I will try and power it up and see what happens. I really like the mechanical design here. So <laughs> look at the, we got three features in each of these to save space on the front panel. So that will be that switch. And then we have, of course, the potentiometer. And then we have the pull switch like that. Isn't that just beautiful? And it really works quite well. The idea is when you pull these, you change the timing by a factor of 100. See here, pulls with pull times 100. So this gives you uh, quite a lot of range. So let's see what is going to happen here. Um, I'll just power it up. And it's using 11 watts. And. Uh, I don't see uh, 
anything is going on, so maybe it's because I need to push. Oh, here we go. So there's something with this uh, pulse thing. I need to play with the trigger. So I think I got most of the things working here. I'm just moving um, one of my outputs from the CMOS output because it's just inverted part of that one. The two outputs we see down here, that will be the variable. You can of course see the positive, I can move it like that. And the negative, I can of course move it like that. So, so that's perfectly fine. Then the purple track here, there's a tiny, tiny little needle pulse here. This is a an output reference trigger. And then you can see if I'm poking around with the pulse delay, I can move my pulses from that reference. And I can of course change the pulse width like that. The times 100. I don't really understand that because it's just not working. Any of these, they don't work. But I think it has something to do with the different modes of pulses or single. See, oh, here we go. That is another type of pulse. And then it is not. Yeah, then it is. This is the double pulse mode. And then it is t the time between the two pulses. I can make that work like that. Pretty cool. So all in all, I think it uh, works. So what can we use this for today? I don't know, but something funny. It is definitely able to give me all sorts of funky uh, pulses and uh, so far so good, right? I was absolutely sure about, I saw some text on the, the transformer, so I had to remove the rear panel like this to give you a nice clear photo of this. So now we know the design of this circuit board is from 1971. And I think this concludes what I wanted to show about this uh, unit really. If you have any cool ideas what I can use this for today, I would definitely love to hear from you. So thank you very much for watching so far. See you around. Bye bye. That lamp is funny.